Thought Vibration by William Walker Atkinson. We're going to discuss this book from three perspectives. Number one, deeper reflections on the thought world. Number two, receiving divine will. And number three, aligning with the higher self. He says, we often hear repeated the well-known mental science statement, thoughts are things. And we say these words without consciously realizing just what is the meaning of the statement. If we fully comprehend the truth of the statement and the natural consequences of the truth back of it, we should understand many things which have appeared dark to us and would be able to use the wonderful power, thought force, just as we would use any other manifestation of energy. Now let's reflect upon this statement. Thoughts are things. If you've been working with this information for an extended period of time, you realize that the outer world, more so each day, you're able to cross-reference it with the thoughts in your inner world, as in the outer world is a reflection of the inner world. The way the outer world takes its shape and form is usually measured by five sensory data-based interpretation tools so we can measure things so we can understand to a certain degree how our reality is created based on our thinking our beliefs our assumptions and our thinking as we continue on this journey of understanding the statement at a deeper level what we'll realize is that not only is reality created by what we know or the tools we have to measure how reality is created but there's probably factors and forces that we aren't able to capture as far as tools that are able to understand and capture how these forces work, but also produce reality. And then we give terms to it like unexplainable. Now, this is fine. We don't have to explain how it's done. The power is really knowing that it exists. And it is in the state of mind of reflection that thoughts are things that a person is able to work with these powers. Should we choose to understand these powers further, we can reflect deeper upon what he says here. You should understand many things which have appeared dark to us. In other words, making the subconscious conscious. Our reality is created by our subconscious mind. Most of reality is subconscious creation. We might think it's conscious, but much of what we do, our habits, our behaviors, our reality, the environment, the outer world is created by our subconscious. As we begin to understand our subconscious to a higher degree, we're able to understand how the cause within, the beliefs, the assumptions, the thinking, and our perception on reality, how we believe reality to work, is reflected in the outer world as people, environment, circumstance and information, the outer world. That's what he's referring to as things, the outer world. And as we reflect upon the cause within, we're able to understand how to influence the outer world in ways that we have not been able to track and figure out how it works to create the results. All one has to do is work with the powers of the mind more so each day to realize that they're able to create in reality ways of bringing forth in reality, I would say, that have never been discovered before and even seem unexplainable. And perhaps one day we will be able to explain things of how it works. However, it's important to remember that the things that we are able to explain now, we once were not able to explain. So then it's a reasonable assumption that one day we will be able to explain this. However, we don't need to learn how to explain it. We can still work with the power. The power was always there since the beginning of time. He says, if we fully comprehend the truth of the statement and the natural consequences of the truth back of it, we should understand many things which have appeared dark to us and would be able to use the wonderful power thought force, just as we would use any other manifestation of energy. Just as you would use your emotions, just as you would use your actions, just as you would use any kind of tool resource to create reality, be it technology or whatnot, it is driven by the mind that leverages the tools and even leverages the unexplainable, the unseen. 
Do not allow yourself to be affected by the adverse and negative thoughts of those around you. Rise to the upper chambers of your mental dwelling and key yourself up to a strong pitch, away above the vibrations on the lower planes of thought. What he's really referring to is elevating yourself at times to higher planes of causation from what you would see as the norm and the cause and effect consensus understanding of how things work via your inner world so you can understand things from a higher perspective. And he says, then you will not only be immune to their negative vibrations, but will be in touch with a greater body of strong positive thought coming from those of your own plane of development. Now we might assume that reality is only what we see and experience via our five senses. However, many of us have had many experiences, if we reflect upon them, that go beyond the five sensory interpretations. It is when we reflect upon these experiences that we further affirm these experiences on the subconscious mind and we begin to experience them more and more so. Because again, the subconscious is the creator of reality, gives birth to reality. And if we understand that the subconscious is impressed by either five sensory data and information or interpretation, plus the sixth sense, so more specifically the interpretation of the five sensory data, and the sixth sense or our imagination via our mental imagery or audio affirmation or self-talk or any kind of inner world dialogue that impresses the subconscious mind to see reality in a different way. If we see that that's what's also creating reality, we'll be able to reflect and see reality is a externalization of what is in our subconscious. And by what he's referring to as immune to their negative vibrations, what he's really referring to is what you experience as contrast to be affirmative to what you desire to create. We have to look at it from a perspective of you have a choice. You have a choice between what you would call a positive thought or a negative thought. Someone's negative thought might actually be your positive thought. Your negative thought might actually be someone's positive thought. There's infinite potentiality and infinite variations of possibility of thought, but the truth always remains the same. The outer world is a reflection of the inner world. Thoughts are things, and your thinking and your interpretation and your perception is creating your experience in this reality. By being immune, he means being the cause, as in realizing that you can choose to receive the suggestions from the outer world, and you can interpret them the way you would like to interpret them. That's what he's referring to. And to further this statement, he says, do not understand me as advocating a high tension continuously. Okay, this is forcing a positive mind, trying to maintain with force a positive state of mind. He says, this is not at all desirable, not only because it is apt to be too much of a strain upon you, but also because you will find it undesirable to relieve the tension at times and become receptive that you may absorb impressions. In other words, you can become close-minded. The goal is to be accepting and understanding of the different thought processes and choose the one is in harmony with what you desire to create. So you can work with the thought forces at all planes of existence that you have access to to create what you desire. In other words, holding true to the assumption or the belief. He also says it is well to be able to relax and assume a certain degree of receptiveness, knowing that you are always able to spring back to the more positive state at will. In other words, and this is really based on your level of development and practice, you're able to go into certain environments that otherwise you would not resonate with, that you would consider to be negative environments, and be able to navigate that existence with a level of humility and understanding while maintaining your state of mind, while being able to elevate yourself if you receive five sensory information or interpretation or suggestion that appears to try to change your state of mind, knowing that the only way you can change your state of mind is based on your beliefs of how you interpret yourself and how you interpret reality. Now, you get better at this with practice. So this is why he's saying, I'm not advocating a high tension continuously because this can feel like force or resistance. This is a process. 
Through the daily cause and effect reflection and choosing what you desire, you impress the subconscious mind, it externalizes, and it becomes easier as your environment and your reality changes, more so each day. Now, this is deeper reflections of how the thought world works. So in summary, there are known cause and effect reflections or ways of interpreting effects based on the thoughts within. And there are ways not known. And much of what the subconscious creates are ways only known to the subconscious, may not be known yet to the conscious mind. Now, as a result of that, we want to ask ourselves, what are we creating? What do we really desire to create? Part of this involves what we call willpower, choosing A versus B, B being the undesirable thought or the undesirable interpretation of the five sensory data, or A being the desirable thought or the desirable interpretation of the five sensory data. Well, we have what we call conscious will, and we might interpret our will to be one of in control, like we are in control of our will, but how much of our will is actually in control of our subconscious? As mentioned, much of our behaviors and how we interpret reality is subconscious. This is where we get into the concept of divine will, seeing reality as one, seeing ourselves as individual expressions of a universal mind. The universal mind, the oneness, the all, is where the divine will comes from. The amenability of the mind to the will can be increased by proper directed practice. That which we are in the habit of referring to as strengthening of the will is in reality the training of the mind to recognize and absorb the power within. The will is strong enough. It does not need strengthening. But the mind needs to be trained to receive and act upon the suggestions of the will. The will is the outward manifestation of the I am. Now, when we try to force things and force willpower, we'll realize that we aren't aligned with divine will. When we allow ourselves to express, we actually create what we desire, and we notice we're not really using what we call traditionally as willpower. However, we are interpreted by others as an individual that has a high degree of willpower, because that's the impression. This goes back to one of the previous discussions I did on unwavering focus. You can increase your focus by force, in other words, forcing yourself to do things, or you can align with what you truly desire to create, do what you truly love to do, and allow your divine will or your divine focus to express itself in which you experience focus. And desire is pure and either interpreted in harmony or subconsciously interpreted in harmony and express, or interpreted in disharmony, consciously or subconsciously, and expressed accordingly in what we call distorted desire or undesirable creation. You see yourself desiring to do something, but you can't do that thing. Instead, your attention or your focus goes in a different direction, and you say, I'm unable to focus on what I desire. The truth is, that the desire is pure and it is being expressed through the outlet of what you call I am not focused or I am putting my attention in this different direction. If we understand the subconscious programming that governs that, the desire and evolve past that, the desire will express as it was meant to be expressed in the aligned place that the desire or the focus, your attention and your awareness was meant to go. So he says every man has potentially a strong will. And that all he has to do is to train his mind to make use of it. So by training the mind, it means releasing. Much of the training of the mind involves letting go. Letting go of past programming. Letting go of ideas, assumptions, and beliefs that create from a place of force rather than a place of flow, joy, bliss, and ease. Now this is an ongoing journey because many are not living like this, but that's okay. Because more and more people are starting to live like this and starting to value that there is two ways of creating success, one from a place of force and one from a place of flow. And it's a matter of personal preference and choice. However, each one of them comes with cause and effects, effects in the outer world and effects through experience based on the cause of the choice within, which again is a reflection of the thinking that creates it. 
And the thinking is revealed in our self-talk, in how we interpret others, in how we interpret reality. And this thinking is important because it helps us understand if we are in alignment with divine will. You know you're in alignment with divine will when what you are really looking to create is from your heart desires, rather than what we call the ego desire or the past self desires. Again, if you choose to create from the ego or past self desire, then what you create will be brought forth and then from there you'll be able to adjust yourself back on the path. This is all part of a journey of evolution and we're all in different stages and there's different ways of learning to get back onto the same path that everybody's on. So he says every man has potentially a strong will and then all he has to do is train his mind to make use of it. In other words, let go of the subconscious ideas and beliefs and whatever is within that made us assume that we don't have strong willpower. In the higher regions of the mind of every man is a great store of willpower awaiting his use. Now, he wrote this book many years ago, and this was his assumption or his belief about reality. And as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. And I resonate with his belief. And this resonating with the belief allows me to also experience and create reality from this perspective. He who has developed his mind so that it will allow the willpower to manifest through it has opened up wonderful possibilities for himself. Not only has he found a great power at his command, but he is able to bring into play and use faculties, talents, and abilities of whose existence he has not dreamed. The secret of the will is the magic key which opens all doors. So not only does this aligning with the divine will as a result of releasing, disempowering programming bring us to a higher level of understanding of how thoughts are things. In other words, the outer world is a reflection of our inner world, more so each day. It also helps us understand and help others understand different causative planes, knowing that the five sensory data right now can be interpreted from many different perspectives. And although we have tools and resources available, information to interpret based on our current level of understanding, our level of understanding is going to continue to evolve so we'll be able to see even more different causative planes that otherwise we would not be able to see, but some work with and don't, again, necessarily need to know how to work with. And it's really just a result of something very simple. It is believing in the outcome, the affirmation of the outcome, seeing it as if it is so. And we can choose to understand how it works. Certainly, I'm a huge fan of it, especially coming from a computer science background. However, it's important to realize that you don't have to know how it works. You can choose if you would like to, but you don't have to. And perhaps some of the reasons why we might choose to understand how it works more so is so we can ease the mind. Because remember, the heart desires, in other words, receives divine will. We allow it to give us our desires and the mind creates the heart and mind work together spirit of harmony we call this the heart and mind relationship the mind creates via imagination and impressing on the subconscious mind the heart gives the desires provides the desires to create when we do this we'll find that we're creating from a place of joy bliss and ease because we're actually creating what we truly desire to create which is also known as aligning or i call this receiving divine will because divine will is always being sent to us this is my interpretation of it. And we can either block it within and feel the resistance based on our programming that we're conscious or subconscious of. Or we can allow it to release by understanding the programming that we are subconscious and otherwise, as he said, dark to. We'll understand and allow it to release, receive from within and express accordingly. Now, where are we going with all this? Why does this even matter? So the concept of the higher self makes even more sense to me today than when I started on this journey and it will continue to make more sense to me. So the idea is that we're going somewhere with this. We're creating reality from this perspective. Reality is evolving. And every one of us have an individual higher self. And this higher self is unique to us. It is who we are becoming. It is who we are destined to be. And at any point in our life, we receive hunches and inspirations from our higher self or visions of the person that we truly desire to be or the experiences that we desire to create the desires that we desire that we decide to bring forth are received from the heart via the higher self the concept of higher self so let's discuss this a little deeper 
He who understands the laws of his mental being develops his latent powers and uses them intelligently. He uses his powers intelligently. He doesn't need to know how to work with the bridges or the bridge of incidents, as Neville puts it, in between, but however, can choose to, and also, and remember that really it's at the highest level of intelligence to leave it up to powers greater than what you are aware of right now, otherwise known as infinite intelligence. Allow infinite intelligence to bring forth what you desire, live and create based on your heart desire. And as a result, this will create less of an identification with programming, which will form what we call the ego mind and align ourselves more with what we truly desire to create, which is what I would call the desires of the higher self. He says he does not disperse his passive mental functions, but makes good use of them also, charges them with the duties for which they are best fitted, and is able to obtain wonderful results from their work, having mastered them and trained them to do the bidding of the higher self. So the bidding of the higher self is the heart desires to create and become who you were destined to become. The passive mental functions are also what we refer to as unknown or unseen forces. They do exist. And from my own personal experience, I noticed that in the earlier stages, I was creating from a lot more from a place of force and control. And then I started to release and create from a place of allowing. Yes, I still do things and perform and go about my day-to-day -day activities. However, I noticed that circumstances and situations change on their own. I don't know how they change, but I allow them to change because I believe that thoughts are things. When I have an idea of something that I'm going to create, I believe it exists in reality. This is why I always say that all of reality is complete. From my perception, I see reality as totally complete. And we move down a journey, which we call bridge of incidents, as Neville put it. He dimensionalized it really well. Until we experience that exact experience in reality. To the degree that we believe it. And to the degree that our subconscious programming is aligned with it. Now this is utilizing the known faculties that we can track, as well as the unknown. We would want to be open to the unknown in order to be able to work with the unknown. If we're closed off to it, then in a way we're in denial about it and we're trying to force it just through what is within conscious awareness. We want to allow subconscious expression with conscious awareness. He knows that the real man within him is the master to whom both active and passive functions are but tools. So again, active and passive faculties active, the ones we know that we consciously do, like our behaviors and our actions, as well as the passive. And I believe in working with both, especially in the entrepreneurial space. We work through certain modalities of active functions. And now I have infused this with the mind stuff. So we also work with the passive functions. And those that work with it are able to not only create what we desire, which is entrepreneurial success, but do it in a way that is in alignment with who they really want to be and how they really want to create thus bringing forth unique innovation to this world from a place of flow, joy, bliss, ease, creativity, rather than a place of force. He knows that the real man within him is the master of whom both active and passive functions are both tools. He has banished fear. See, fear creates a distortion, creates what we call the ego mind. And by the ego mind, I'm not referring to the conscious part of us, the one that decides, the ones that chooses. I'm really referring to the part of the mind where we say has disempowering programming towards ourselves and others. That's based on fear. That's based on affirming the fear from past experiences on the subconscious mind to create our experiences, which manifests itself as scarcity thinking and separation. When we understand this to a high degree, we realize that we are all individual expressions of the same mind and everyone is really saying the same thing from different perspectives. And we want to choose the perspective that stimulates us to allow us to connect with our own inner voice, receive the desires from the higher self and create in the way we desire by working with what he calls the active and passive functions, which are known and unknown ways of creating into existence. He says he has banished fear and enjoys freedom. He has also found himself. Now, this is an ongoing journey, so this is continuum. And he also says here in bold, he has learned the secret of the I am. Now, many of you have been studying this concept of the I am. And this information has been put together to contribute to your understanding of the I am. And I trust that it'll further dimensionalize and bring you to a higher degree of understanding and an ability to create from the perspective I am. 
Here's an exercise that can help you affirm, realize and affirm your higher self that he put in the book that I want to share. He says, fix the mind firmly on the higher self. In other words, imagine your higher self. Imagine who you desire to be. And draw inspiration from it. When you feel led to yield to the promptings of the lower part of your nature, in other words, the past self or the disempowering self, which we usually call the ego self, when you are tempted to burst into anger, assert the I and your voice will drop. Know that you are actually your higher self right now. Thoughts are things. When you feel vexed and cross, remember what you are and rise above your feeling. When you feel fearful, remember that the real self fears nothing and assert courage. If you feel jealousy inciting, think of your higher nature and laugh, and so on, asserting the real self and not allowing the things on the lower plane of mentality to disturb you. Do not allow these things to master you. They should be your subjects, not your masters. You must get away from this plane, and the only way to do so is to cut loose from these phases of thought which have been running things. Okay, he says running things in quote, subconscious thoughts. And each day you become more aware of what is within your subconscious by cause and effect reflection, more and more so each day. You may have trouble at the start, but keep at it and you will have the satisfaction which comes only from conquering the lower parts of our nature. You have been a slave long enough. Now it is time to free yourself. If you will follow these exercises faithfully, you will be a different being by the end of the year. But it takes work. Now, what is the work? The work really is cause and effect reflection and evolving meaning within. Now, we have the power to work with our imagination to impress the subconscious mind. This has been a great contribution by the works of Neville Goddard. And through this process, we notice that our thoughts become more in relation or in harmony with who we aspire to be, which is our higher self. Our emotions respond to certain experiences in a way that is not recreating the reactivity from the past. In other words, recreating the past. We feel less reactive, more proactive. Our actions are different. Our behaviors are different. What we decide to do is different. And we notice that we're a lot more focused and in flow what we desire to do. Thus, we're exercising or we're allowing more specifically divine will. And, as mentioned, we also work with higher faculties of thought, which appear as unseen, the invisible forces. And just because you might not be able to explain these invisible forces, you can reflect on your journey and realize that you are creating from the perspective of working with these invisible forces. You have the power to call upon and work with the invisible forces and it will become more so each day. That's the work. Now, much of this work means evolving past what you've already known and accepted as the norm. And so it can be challenging. More and more so each day you will get better at it with practice. He says, this is not child's play but a task for the earnest men and women. Will you make the effort? If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.